This should come as no surprise, but the United States military has a lot of incredible helicopters to their name. Of course they do. They're the U.S. military. They need good kit. But you won't believe that some of these choppers are actually real. These are 20 amazing helicopters of the U.S. military. Number 20. Bell UH-1 Huey, 1956. The world's first jet turbine-powered mass-produced helicopter first made an appearance all the way back in 1956, and since then, it's been an iconic sight in virtually all 20th century war movies. This classic helicopter has been reproduced more than 16,000 times by its manufacturers at Bell and other licensees. It's the most successful aircraft in all of aviation history. These are the helicopters that are known for their characteristic won't 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 sound, which would announce the arrival of a Huey from miles away. These choppers were the most useful and highly regarded of their class for many, many decades, and they're only now really being properly phased out and replaced by the modernized versions known as the Super Huey. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the sweet topic. This image has been circulating on the internet for quite a while now. It shows a helicopter that, if it's to be believed, is the newest U.S. military helicopter. Rumors about what this thing is capable of are kind of getting out of hand. If any of them can be believed, this will truly be one of the most amazing helicopters of the U.S. military. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below using the hashtag sweet topic. Number 19. Sikorsky SH-3 Sea King, 1959. This helicopter is not like a regular old flying machine. The Sikorsky Sea King SH-3 is designed to function in all weather, which is obviously a bonus for any kind of military vehicle. It isn't often that you can choose the weather for your battles, now is it? This version is also equipped to support an anti-submarine warfare mission. As well as the war-based stuff to which this machine is deployed, it's also the same helicopter that's involved in search and rescue efforts for aircraft, and it will often be sent as a guard aircraft to fly alongside important airplanes. For example, the VH-3D version of the Skorsky Sea King is used by Marine Helicopter Squadron 1 to support the executive transport of the President of the United States. So this thing is considered to be the very best kind of helicopter out there. They like to say that this chopper is always the first aircraft in the air and the very last to land. Kind of like the military aircraft equivalent of a die-hard party animal. The one you can always rely on to stick it out on the dance floor when everyone else is flaked out and taken off their high heels to stagger home via the kebab shop. Number 18. Boeing CH-47 Chinook, 1961. The big hefty Chinook helicopter was built to meet the demands of modern Army aircraft to fulfill multiple roles. These machines were needed to function in many areas of warfare, which included observation, the delivery of supplies, the transportation of troops, and to also be able to carry and utilize weapons in battle situations. So not much then. The Boeing CH-47 Chinook is most effective at transporting heavy loads via air, and it's able to reach places where other vehicles cannot easily go. In the Vietnam War, this was the aircraft that had the lowest accident record of any in the United States Army, and it would be employed in huge numbers in order to keep the supply and troop access routes open across almost impossible jungle terrain. The height of the propeller blades allows for easy and fast exit and entry to the rear of the Chinook, where there's a low ramp from which anything and everything could be unloaded or even loaded. They were able to carry up to 75 personnel as well as vehicles, and all of this could be set down and deployed within seconds. These helicopters were designed to be repaired in the field. It was produced with the idea that a standard mechanics toolkit should be sufficient to repair and maintain the workings of this aircraft. They're still considered to be the best version of this heavy-duty kind of chopper and are used all over the world today. 
Number 17. Sikorsky S64 Skycrane, 1962. Originally designed for military use, the Sikorsky S64 Skycrane was designed to carry interchangeable pods that fit underneath. These pods could then be used for a variety of functions including transportation of troops and the movement of cargo. This helicopter is a heavy-duty beast with six rotor blades and two turbine-powered jet engines, so it's capable of carrying extremely heavy loads compared with other military helicopters. The S64 generally requires a crew of a pilot and co-pilot, as well as a support crew of six to eight individuals. Back in 1992, the company Ericsson Aircrane would purchase the rights to manufacture these S-64 powerhouses, and they then set about making further modifications to the already ample abilities of this mighty machine. The Ericsson adaptations included the addition of a capacity to carry 2,650-gallon tank. This Titanic tank can be filled using a draft hose in less than one minute, all while the helicopter is still hovering. So it is rather a clever sort of machine and is perfectly built to adapt to the ever-changing and unpredictable demands of the modern battlefield. Number 16. Sikorsky CH-53 Sea Stallion, 1964. The Sikorsky CH-53 Sea Stallion is what this range of S-65 helicopters is most commonly known as. These are heavy lift transport helicopters that were originally developed for the United States Marine Corps, but they've since found service in the armed forces of Germany, Israel, Iran, and Mexico. As well as this standard heavy lifting beast, Sikorsky have also developed a massive monster copter with a third engine, and it's capable of even heavier lifting than its predecessor. That's why the big boy is known as as the Super Stallion. This helicopter has a crew of two pilots and one or more crew chiefs and can carry 38 troops or 24 stretchers measuring 88 feet and 6 inches long by 24 feet and 11 inches high. These are generally equipped with two door mounted machine guns and some may even have a ramp mounted machine gun as well. The CH-53 has seen enormous use by the United States military in war zones around the world. It's served in many conflicts and has been a pivotal piece of equipment on more than one occasion. From its inception and use during the Vietnam War, the Sea Stallion has continued to be one of the biggest and strongest helicopters available. Number 15. Bell AH-1 Cobra, 1965. The Bell AH-1 Cobra is designed specifically as an attack helicopter, carrying a whole bunch of weaponry, and is flown by specialist pilots for whom the mission is always very clear indeed. This is an attacking aircraft. This two-blade single-engine helicopter is agile and quick, and it's singularly deployed by the United States Marine Corps as the service's primary attack helicopter. Although there are a few surplus versions of this machine out there doing service as forest firefighters, fighting machines, so they aren't entirely all about the killing. Those converted versions are known by the United States Forest Service as Firewatch Cobra and sometimes Fire Snake. These helicopters would be developed closely alongside that of other famous bell chopper like the UH-1 Huey or the Iroquois, and the AH-1 is crewed by two pilots, or one pilot and a gunner, or a co-pilot. Its maximum speed is 171 miles per hour, and it holds a range of 357 miles miles. The main thing about these choppers is that they're designed for use in combat. They're armed with three-barreled Gatling gun cannons and can have between 7 and 19 rockets mounted and ready to fire. They're also equipped with missile launchers. These machines, well, you can say that they mean business. Number 14. Sikorsky UH-60 Blackhawk, SH-6070 Seahawk, 1974. The Black Hawk is a twin-engine, four-bladed, medium-lift utility helicopter which entered service in the United States Army in 1979. It became the Armed Forces' premier tactical helicopter and took on roles with the United States Navy, Air Force, and the Coast Guard as well. The Black Hawk has been serving in the field since the late 1970s and has seen service in combat in Grenada, Panama, the Balkans, Somalia, Iraq, Afghanistan, and other parts of the Middle East. This is one of the U.S. military 
Italy's most famous helicopters on the account of movies and all that stuff. It also transpired that when the 160th Special Operations Aviation Regiment, which led the operation that killed Osama bin Laden in 2011, they did so using highly modified UH-60 Blackhawks. Now, as well as being one of the most famous, the Black Hawk is also one of the most popular helicopters used by militaries around the globe. It's been adapted and modified so many times that it has more variations than any other chopper out there. Manned by two pilots and two crew chiefs or gunners, the standard Black Hawk has a capacity for 2,640 pounds of cargo inside, which includes 11 personnel or six stretchers and 8,000 pounds of cargo on the outside. It's equipped with an array of machine guns, plus rockets and missiles, and these helicopters can also be equipped with a minefield dispersal system that's basically another way of saying bombs, and it's no wonder that the Black Hawk is a perennially popular chopper. Number 13. Boeing AH-64 Apache, 1975 From one twin-engined four-blade helicopter to another, here we are with the Boeing AH-64 Apache, another attack helicopter. The Apache features some fancy technology, having a nose-mounted sensor suite, which is designed to support target acquisition, and also capable of full night vision systems so that it can be deployed in multiple situations and over difficult terrain, either day or night. This is a heavily armed machine which has a 30mm M230 chain gun on board, as well as carrying a mixture of AGM-114 Hellfire missiles and Hydra-70 rocket pods. Since it was first placed into production, there have been over 1,000 AH-64s manufactured. Although the United States Army is the main operator of this Apache, these helicopters are also the primary attack choppers of many other nations, namely Singapore, Japan, Israel, Greece, and the Netherlands, who all employ the Apache in their combat forces. The same machine has also been licensed for production in the United Kingdom, where it's known as the Augusta Westland Apache. One of the most appealing features of this helicopter is that it has the ability to evade missile attacks and even continue to function after sustaining heavy combat damage. In most accounts, the use of this helicopter in war zones, even those that take severe damage, are still able to continue and then return safely. That's how they've been designed, after all. Number 12. The Bell V-22 Osprey, 1989. Is it a helicopter? Perhaps it's an airplane. Well, actually, it's kind of both. The Bell Boeing V-22 Osprey is a multi-purpose aircraft with both vertical and short takeoff and landing capabilities. It performs effectively as a conventional helicopter, but can also take up the challenge of the long-range crews. It's officially known as a tilt-rotor aircraft, which has both speed and accuracy, requiring fewer limiting factors than a conventional aircraft does, but it can also perform many of the duties that are associated with a long-range aircraft. As well as its obvious airplane-style abilities, the Osprey is also pretty good. As a helicopter and has all the vertical lift capability that you may expect. The space for 24 troops inside, as well as the ability to lift an external sling load of 15,000 pounds, makes the V-22 Osprey a great asset in both combat as well as search and rescue operations. When it would first be designed, this unusual aircraft was created to support the United States Marine Corps amphibious assault mission, but the benefits of the multi-purpose machine soon found other branches of the armed forces putting in their own orders for the Osprey as well. Number 11. Sikorsky S-97 Raider, 2015. When defense giant Lockheed Martin acquired Sikorsky Aircraft in 2015, it was the beginning of a new super tech era in the manufacturer's history. The Sikorsky S-97 Raider was to be a symbol of future plans of this colossus of a company. The Raider has a trademarked X-2 counter-rotating rotors on top of one another, and it's a next-generation light helicopter which is designed for speed and tactical accuracy. These machines are what Lockheed Martin and Sikorsky have proffered as the future future of aircraft technology that will eventually define the combat systems of the entire world. Nothing scary or even intimidating about that at all.
And if you aren't cowering behind your couch as you watch the intimidating sci-fi stylings of the S97 Raider on your screen, then you may be interested in a few more fun facts about this modern machine. It's designed to fly extremely high and extremely low, and it can function at very high speeds and also at very low speeds, handling extremes of temperature without a dip in performance. All in all, the S97 Raider is a formidable force in combat aircraft, which will determine the direction of flight for many years to come. Plus, it kind of looks like it should belong to Batman, so you know. Number 10. Kellett XR-8, 1944 Built in the United States during the Second World War, the Kellett XR-8 was a kind of experimental flying machine which was designed primarily to demonstrate just how feasible the twin rotor system actually was. Things have come a long way since this helicopter made its debut, but the influence of the XR-8 and its successive incarnation as the XH-8 are absolutely undeniable. The Kellett XR-8 achieved its primary objective of demonstrating the twin rotor system, but it also highlighted a number of significant issues in its design, which ultimately led future helicopter designs in a rather different direction. But without the mistakes and problems of this early engineering, it would not have been possible for newer and more successful helicopters to come. Perhaps what's most striking about the XR-8 is its unusually stubby shape of the fuselage. It had the appearance of a kind of flying egg, rather different to the sleeker designs with which we're familiar today. It was also inherently unstable, and many of the issues that it faced during test flights were a direct result of this instability, but the most profoundly troubling problem it faced was the collision of a blade from each of the rotors while it was in mid-flight. This didn't cause a crash, but it did highlight the need for much more rigid rotor systems, thus paving the way for the development of future twin rotor choppers in the decades to come. Well, you know, you can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs, right? Number 9. Cayman HH-43 Husky, 1947 Developed in the aftermath of the Second World War, the Cayman HH-43 Husky eventually won the contract with the United States Air Force in 1956. They were to be the chopper of choice for use in crash, rescue, and firefighting missions, and the first ones would be delivered in 1958. Now, originally, the Husky was a piston-powered helicopter. The first 18 that were supplied were of this kind. These were then replaced after 1959 with an updated design that used turbine power instead. During the Vietnam War, the Husky was primarily engaged as a rescue chopper that flew more missions during this conflict than all the other aircraft combined. It was especially effective in a rescue role on the account of its particularly rapid readiness for action. Huskies could be prepped and deployed in around one minute when they were on alert. These helicopters established no fewer than seven world records for their rate of climb, altitude, and distance traveled, and between 1958 and 1968, the United United States Air Force received 263 Huskies. Several of them have since found their way to serve in the Air Forces of Colombia, Morocco, Burma, Thailand, and even Pakistan. There are still a few Huskies in use in the civilian population where they're favored for use in logging operations. Number 8. Hiller OH-23 Raven, 1948. The Hiller OH-23 Raven was a military light observation helicopter based on the Hiller Civilian Model 360 or the UH-12 that was first flown in 1948. The Raven was to perform duties as a utility aircraft and in observation, and perhaps most significantly in medevac during the Korean War. The OH-23 had a top speed of 97 miles per hour with a two-bladed main rotor, a metal two-bladed tail rotor. The medevac version also carried two external skid-mounted pods, and the OH-23 Raven saw service as a scout aircraft during the early part of the Vietnam War before it would then be replaced by the Hughes OH-6A Cayuse in early 1968. Stanley Hiller, who originally designed and built the Raven, was a bit of a prodigious talent. He built and flew his first 
helicopter, the XH-44, when he was the young age of only 19 years old. He then went on to establish the United Helicopters Company with shipping mogul Henry Kaiser, and from there, developed the prototype for the UH-12 helicopter that would eventually be the very first to travel across the continental United States from California to New York in 1949. Number 7. Cayman SH-2 Sea Sprite over many decades, the Cayman SH-2 Sea Sprite helicopter served in militaries across the globe. She would begin her long and respected career in the United States Navy in 1962 and remain on active duty there until being replaced by the Sikorsky SH-60 Seahawk, the naval sister to the Blackhawk. This helicopter would be operated from American aircraft carriers as well as in search and rescue missions, and after some years in service, the Sea Sprite would then be upgraded to include two two turboshaft engines all to increase the overall power and handling capability of the machine at sea. In 1970, the role of the Seahawk was then widened to be included in the Light Airborne Multipurpose System, known as LAMPS for short, which was designed to offer naval ships better solutions against submarines with their inclusion in the anti-submarine warfare system. Sea Sprites were then kept armed and ready aboard naval vessels, all in case they would be required at any moment to engage in combat with an aggressive submarine. And we we all know how cross those things can get. Number 6. Hughes OH-6 Cayuse are you still there? How is all this helicopter chat working out for you? 20 helicopters is rather a lot now, isn't it? Here we have a helicopter with the cute nickname of the Flying Egg. That should tell you a lot about its appearance, but not a whole lot about how it functions. This is a compact little chopper with low drag and a remarkable ability to perform very fast and tricky maneuvers with ease. It's extremely efficient and can fly very close to the ground and at high speeds. The most notable thing, perhaps, about these flying eggs is that they're extremely quiet. These eggs would first pop out in 1963 and became known in the wider public in 1966 when they would begin military service with the United States Army. They saw combat in Vietnam where they were used in huge numbers for observation and utility roles, and they used the small and quiet Cayuse as a scout for the big nasty attack helicopters like the AH-1 Cobra. These eggs were quick and nimble and were used almost as bait to draw fire, which the Cobras would then use as a target. It's brutal, but it's also efficient. Number 5. Delacner HZ-1 Aerocycle well, have you ever seen such an incredibly crazy contraption? It seems to stick out like a sore thumb here amongst the usual looking helicopters and killing machines that we've seen so far, but apparently this was a real flying machine in its time. Funny how it didn't catch on, you know. The Delacner HZ-1 Aerocycle was a flying platform, which was a one-man flying machine developed for a period of time during the late 1950s and early 1960s. An innovative and slightly bonkers design, this was a period in technological development when the Army was apparently open to trying new and exciting things, or perhaps they just thought that it looked kind of fun, which you have to admit, it really does. After trying out a bunch of different sorts of flying platforms, the United States Army didn't take these on as service aircraft after all, but I can't imagine what they thought they might be good for. Let me know all the things you would do if you had one of these 1950s flying platforms at your disposal. Number 4. Boeing Sikorsky RAH-66 Comanche Another speedy and intimidatingly agile modern offering, the Boeing Sikorsky RAH-66 Comanche was developed as a reconnaissance and attack helicopter for the United States Army from the late 1990s onwards. This machine was to be the world's first stealth helicopter, but the project was terminated in 2004, and the dream of creepy invisible choppers dominating the skies would never come into fruition. The RAH-66 was the first purpose-built stealth attack helicopter in the world world and was designed to replace older stock light attack choppers like the trusty old Hueys and the Cobras.
This machine would be designed with fully powered internal bays that housed anti-armor and anti-air missiles, also promoting heavy use of stealth materials in order to help conceal its approach from enemy radars. In the end, though, the United States Army did a somewhat uncharacteristically frugal thing, deciding to abandon the idea of replacing all their old aircraft with shiny new stealthy ones, deciding instead to simply modernize an aged stock rather than procure an expensive technologically heavy attack system. Number 3. Bell UH-1Y Venom now, you should be familiar by now with the old-school Huey that's been doing sterling work in the United States military ever since the 1970s, but those old choppers, well, have they really seen better days? Of course they have, and now they're being replaced by these. The Bell UH-1Y Venom is currently in full-rate production to replace aging Hueys of the fleet. These new helicopters have been dubbed Super Hueys, and sometimes they're also known as Yankees because of their variant letter Y. It's thrilling stuff, really. They would be certified as operationally capable by the United States Marine Corps in 2008 and were deployed for the first time in 2009 with the 13th Marine Expeditionary Unit as part of the aviation combat element. These Super Hueys have have a crew of one or two pilots plus a crew chief, and may have other crew members depending on the requirements of the specific mission. These helicopters can do a maximum of 189 miles per hour with a cruising speed of about 182, and they're also equipped with two external stations for 70mm Hydra 70 rockets and two mounts for machine guns or even Gatling guns. Number 2. Kiyosaki X-49 this helicopter is a hybrid sort of affair, and it's been cobbled together by using the existing airframe of the Sikorsky SH-60 Seahawk and then bunging a Piasecki vectored thrust ducted propeller unit on its tail. So what is this Frankenstein's monster of a chopper all about exactly? Well, it appears that there are still some mad scientists for whom making things really fast is their only priority, so much so that this general idea that a compound helicopter built for extra fast fast horizontal speed has been around since the 1930s, and yet nobody has quite managed to make it a fully workable reality. The design itself is a cross between a traditional helicopter using a conventional rotor system for all that classic hovering action, and then, in addition to that, there's this massive propulsion unit on its rear end which is supposed to make for much faster flight. Oh, and there it is, the current efforts for a compound helicopter that's still not even close enough to being effective to be a serious contender. But the efforts do continue, and this idea seems to be the U.S. military's white whale. Number 1. MD-500 Defender now here's a helicopter that looks like the kind of transportation that a movie villain would choose to escape from the scene of a crime. It's a small and nimble thing, it's well armed, and frankly, it has a really menacing sort of face. Everything that a baddie would want from a chopper, based on the OH-6 Cayuse light helicopter that we've already looked at in this list, the MD-500 Defender is a light multi-role military helicopter that's often used as in observation sorts of missions, but that doesn't mean that it can't do a lot of fighty stuff when it's required to do so. This thing was often used in the Vietnam War in that capacity, alongside the bigger and badder Cobra, but it could also be loaded with anti-tank missiles. The versions of this chopper that are used in combat at sea can be equipped with search radar, magnetic anomaly detectors, and lightweight aerial torpedoes. You know, all that fun stuff. So don't let anyone tell you that this is just a little reconnaissance chopper. It has many, many uses, and most of them involve rather a lot of killing abilities. Thanks for joining us on that very long mission throughout the history of helicopters in the United States military. Which of these choppers did you find most amazing? And can you believe that some of the madcap ideas of people have had? As always, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Be sure to check out the other cool stuff that's showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.